and we're going to continue where we left off with our linked list discussion. And I call this class my linked list. We, we had decided to create this class called my linked list and put inside here another class called node. And we said that by putting one class inside the other, we could uh, avoid having to be put private in front of the, the data members here. And so we could access this data without having to use getters and setters, which is just much more convenient. So this containment is another way of protecting our data. So we had before, we had uh, built the link list manually inside the main program. And we said this is kind of clunky. And we just did this as an exercise to kind of show what the link list would look like typically. What we really want to do, though, is we want to build this link list as an elegant class so that a user can create a list, add elements to the list, uh, find elements, basically provide all the features that the user has grown to expect from, say, ArrayList. The fact that it's a link list is only sort of partially known to the user. Another question for you is, does the user know anything about nodes? No, the user doesn't even know that nodes exist. Nodes are just a convenient container that you have created inside your my link list class to help you maintain the list. But the user doesn't care about nodes. The user just knows it's got a bunch of numbers. They want to put them in a list, be able to retrieve them when they need to, et cetera. So keep that in mind later on when we're trying to decide what the user uh, interface should look like. The user interface, the methods the user calls, should not have any nodes in them in the parameters because the user doesn't know about nodes. So um, I had been talking to you last class about the add method. We'll talk about that later. Let's talk, first of all, of some simple methods we're going to need for our class. So let's just take the most rudimentary features of the array list, for an example, because that's also a list. Keep in mind that this link list has to look similar in presentation to the user from the user interface perspective. So what would be some simple methods in the array list that we also want to provide for our my link list class. We're going to need an add method. And I'm going to say we're going to use two of these. Uh, one of them is we're going to add uh, some sort of data. And the other one, what would be the other add method that we would need? Think about what it looks like for an array list. OK, so that would be like, like index and data. And that would like essentially be like an insert operation, right? And they would shift everything else over like you do with an array list. Question, where does this method add data if it's not given? Does it add it to the front of the list or the back of the list? What happens in an array list? What should happen here? Mr. Oris Fayev, it should add at the end. I mentioned this because I mistakenly said it should add it at the beginning last class. Uh, so it should add it to the end of the list, not at the beginning. So it doesn't add where the front pointer is. It adds it to the end of the list. Uh, these are some important methods. Can someone point me to some simpler methods maybe we could start with? Uh, what are the things you typically ask an array list? What are the same things you might want to ask a link list? Mr. Shulson? Size is an important method. Uh, get. Um, I'm trying to remember now. Let's go with remove index for now. We'll do remove item later. That's much more difficult. OK, is empty. And um, I don't think there's an is full command. I don't think we need that. OK, so we have our basic ones here. Now, just as a reminder of the work that we had done before, our basic link list class looked like this, where we created these boxes, and we put these numbers in these boxes. And we had a special pointer called the front pointer. And it basically pointed to the beginning of the list so we could parse the list. And we made sure that the last node here pointed to null to signify that that was the last element in the list. So now we know that our official my link list class is going to need a front pointer. So let's put one in. So we'll say private something front. And my next question is, what should that data type on front be? It's going to be a node. And um, I'm going to just move this node class to the top so that it doesn't interfere with our work today. I'm going to just put it all the way up here. And uh, let's get down here now. 
And when we have a constructor, we're not going to use this. Now, this was a jury rigged way of creating a linked list. We're going to do it for real now. Um, so my next question is, it, when we create the constructor for our my linked list, so let's do that now. Uh, let's create a constructor list like that. And so far, we only have one attribute. We may want to add another one here, private int size. Now, this is not the method size. This is the variable that tracks size. When we have our linked list, there are two ways to implement the size method. One way is that we can have a variable that tracks the size, and every time we change the list, we'll change the variable. The other way is we can recalculate the size of the list every time we need it. Just to make it simple, even though it's not really efficient, I'm going to pick the other way, which is to have a method that recalculates the size every time we need it. And so we're not going to have a size variable. How would we calculate the size in a method when we need it? We would use a for loop, or in this case, we don't know how big it is. We'd probably want to use a while loop. And we would just go through the pointers until we got to a null. And we could count how many times we ran through the loop to tell us how big the list is. We'll look at that later today if we have time. But right now, my question is, when the list is first born, how big is it? And what should I set the front pointer to? Sir, when the list is born, how big is it? Uh, zero. What should I do with the front pointer, sir? Null. Yes, sir. That's right. Front equals null. Now, it's probably already null because it got initialized to null here, but let's explicitly set it to null just to make it clear to the reader. Now, I have sort of a derivative question. Uh, we're going to write this is empty method. I would like you to finish the header and the body of the code now, please. Mr. Ajoji, sir, what should the header for is empty look like, public or private? And the return type, what should that be? And uh, is it going to be a big method or a little method, sir? What should it have in here? This would be one way of writing it. A shorter way, which Mr. Scholson has suggested, would be like that. So if the front is pointing to null, we know that this is going to be empty. Another way we could write this, this, is, this would be perfectly good. This would be another way to write it. That would be perfectly fine also. We haven't written the size method yet, but we know that we're going to write it, right? So that will be uh, this, but this way is better. This way will be better because it will be more efficient. It, we won't have to run the size method. We can just look at the front pointer right away and tell. So you can see that in this last five minutes, I've already managed to get together uh, to put together a basic constructor and an is empty method. And now what I'd like to do is see if you can write the size method. So to do the size method, you're going to have to count how many nodes there are. So you're going to need a loop like Mr. Afsari suggested earlier. You don't know how many times the loop's going to run, so a while loop would be better than a for loop. You could use a for loop. What is the header for the size method? And what should I? what do I need to do first, Mr. Mulcahy? Now, let me just make a comment. You see how he's got this variable, the same name as the method? I told you not to do this in CSA, but you're all grown up now, so it's OK. And sir, can you tell me what is your idea behind doing this now? So we're going to move this temp pointer along. Why don't we just move the front pointer along? We already have that. We're going to lose the whole list. So that's why we need to make a copy. OK, uh, Mr. Mariak, you're doing great, sir. Go ahead. Ms. Mila had corrected us on that, and it was supposed to be while temp is not equal to null. Try to understand why it's not front.next. Front doesn't move. Temp is moving along. OK, temp is dynamic here. Front is static. OK, and uh, then what do I do at the end here, Mr. Mariak? Now, we'll test this a little bit later after we've built a uh, link list and uh, tried it out. But we have the basics of the size method. Uh, my lesson is running a little bit long. I had planned to start the add method, but I think we're going to save that for another day. This is all I want to do with you right now.